Hey everyone, in this video we are going to see how we can write unit test for the controller layer. So when we write a unit test, mostly we are testing a specific method within a unit. We have a slight difference between the test that we write for the controller layer versus the other layer. When client calls the API, it calls the API method such as get request, put request, etc. And Spring Boot internally calls the get product from the dispatcher servlet. We not only have to test this method, but also we have to test the web layer, the request, their validation, etc. We have to mock this layer and also we have to mock any service layer that we are using within the method. For mocking the web layer, we have the test library, which is a Spring Boot Starter Test. It provides us all the configurations which are required for the mocking. Let's look at our test. So here we have the product controller test and we want to test the get API. This is verifying we are getting the successful response with the expected response. And similarly in another test we are expecting that it should return 400 when for a specific product there is no detail in the system. We are not going to call the get product method directly from the controller but we are calling the API. For that we need to mock the web layer because we don't want to load the whole Spring Boot context right. That is the responsibility of the integration test. To mock the MVC layer, we have to use mock MVC. This mock MVC we are getting from the test web servlet. We need to instantiate this mock MVC. For that, we have to use the Spring context and then we can auto wire this. To start the Spring Boot test context with the web layer, we have to use one of the annotation which is web MVC test. It will provide us all the configuration that are required to initiate the Spring context in the test and configuration for the MVC layer. We can use this mock MVC to call the API and for calling the API we can use perform method of this mock MVC. It takes the request builder in the input. For different APIs we can use the different static builder like for get API we have to use the get builder and then you can pass the URL of the API that is under test. Here we have provided the API ID and now Whenever this API will be called, we are expecting that it is returning 200 response and the response message is product response DTO. So we have the product response DTO which is containing the field related to the product such as ID, name, category, price. With this mock MVC, we can utilize the available method to verify the assertions. So we have the end expect method. Here we can provide different kind of assertions that we need to test. Number one is the status code. So here we have the status which is coming from the status result matchers. We need is okay. So we have the successful response. Now if we test this, it is failing and the failure is we are expecting to return 200 but it is giving 404. That is not found. That means now we need to fix our controller and here we are expecting that the API URL is slash API slash product slash ID and the ID. In the controller, we have this request mapping which we haven't provided. So let's add this. And if we run the test, so this is the successful result. We have only verified the status. Now we also need to verify the response of the API and that is what we want to verify. So we have this ID, name, category and price. We can add more assertions. The very next thing that we are going to do is we are going to verify that we are getting the specific response from the API. For that, again, we can use the and expect. And here we need to test the JSON response. So here we have JSON park dollar dot and the name of the property that you are testing. We have ID, name, category, and price. So let's say ID, and then we can verify the value of that ID. So we are expecting that it should return one. Similarly, we want to verify that the name and that property is this, correct? And similarly, the third one is the category. Final property that we are going to verify is the price. Okay. From our test, we are expecting that the API should return all of this. But if we run this test, it will fail because from our controller, we are returning null. Instead of returning null, API should get the response from some service. Okay, so for that, let's create one service product service. And here, say we have one method get product and then the product ID that we are getting in the input. So let's define field and the field is product service. Right now, we are not interested in the product service implementation because we are testing the product controller. 
so we'll just add one interface product service that will be in the services and let's create one method get product in the product service that is going to take long as an input and going to return the product response DTO. This is our controller and we have this product service. We just need to auto wire this and we can use the constructor based auto wiring or the setter base. Let's use the constructor based. Now we have to auto wire the product service, but we don't have product service, so we need a mock of the product service. For that, we can use the mock bean, and here we have the product service. There could be multiple controller in our application and we want to ensure that only those beans are initialized which are part of this product controller for that we can add here the product controller whenever we are mocking some that means we need to mock the response from the method calls so in product controller we have product service which is calling the get product method so in our test we can do the same thing and here whenever we are calling the get product method from the product service we can expect that it is returning some product response DTO and that response is what we have expected over here. Let's place it at the top and expect it. Now if we run this particular test again, test is successful. Here we can change one more thing. Right now we have verified our properties by applying a JSON path and for each value we have added the assertion. If we have a DTO that contains the other DTO object and then subsequently other DTO object right so here if we write such assertion in that way we might be polluting our test case we can do one more thing instead of testing the properties like this from here we can simply return the value and this gives us the mock MVC result from this we can get the response and this provides us the content as a string this is the API response that we can get now we need to verify this JSON is equivalent to the expected result for that we can just use the object mapper and then from here we can read the value content as a string and then we need to convert it to the type that we are expecting which is product response DTO we have the product response DTO now simply we can assert that this response is equivalent to the expected one if we run this test here we are able to get the response in the form of DTO. So this is the second approach that we can use over here. We have one more scenario for the get API. Whenever we are calling this API slash product slash ID slash one, then it should return the 400 response. That means for this ID, product detail does not exist. Here we have the mock MVC. This is what we are doing and we are getting the MVC result. All right. And the response that we are expecting is it should throw the error response and the code is this and this is the message. This failure we are getting from the service itself for that purpose we have this product service and when calling this get product it should throw some exception and this is product exception okay. So we have got one product exception that is what we have created and it takes the code and the message we can pass the code so this is the code that is what we are getting from the service and this is the message and same is converting into the error response whenever this API will be called this get product method will return the product exception instead of product response DTO we are expecting that it is going to return the error response if we run the test it is failing and this is the response that we are getting so in our controller we can add the expected behavior there are various approaches to handle the exceptions and i'm not going with the best practice right now let's see how we can add the error handling here whenever exception is thrown from the api call we have to handle that so for that we can use the exception handler right now i'm just using it in the controller itself but we can definitely use it in a generic way for all the controller in the application so here we have the exception handler so we have this uh, exception so let's just add the class and now let's create one method public response entity and type error response handle product error this is the method and whenever this api will be called exception will be thrown from the service then this handler is going to handle that particular exception so we just need the type of the exception over here which is product exception all right and here we can just return the response entity this is going to return the new error response all right 
and the code that is what we are getting is from the exception itself and similarly we have the exception dot get message this response entity requires one more thing which is the status code so here we are returning the bad request if we run this test expected 200 and it is returning 400 that is what we need to expect actually we need to expect that it should return the bad request so now our test is okay same way we can just use the test for the create product api so for the response verification we can do the same thing only difference here is we need to pass the request body let's see how we can do that here in the api instead of get we just need the post okay and then we have api slash products and whenever we call this api it should return the is okay response and eventually it should return the mbc result for the post request we also need to send the request body and that is what we can do over here with this post we can pass the content we can send the json in the string form or we can put that json in some file and send the byte in the content okay, that is what i have here in my request i can simply add this over here in the string form and then whenever we are getting this response i am expecting that it should return the response in the product controller we have the create product api so here we need the product service dot create product and then it will take some product request dto it will return the product response dto so we need the method in the interface that's it and in our test case whenever the create product will be called then it should return the expected and here we can pass the actual dto of this so you can do that and you should do that rather but right now i'm just using the any type of product request dto so whenever this create product method will be called with this then it should return the expected so we are getting the same response here let's have this over here let's test this okay it is failing and here you can see http media type not supported by default it is sending the application octet stream type that is not supported because the api takes the application json content so we can also pass the content type over here content type and then it is application json and again let's run this okay so here we have got the successful response here we have another test whenever the create product api will be called with the duplicated product then it should fail and it should return the 400 error and this is the expected result so it is on the same line as our cat api failure message we are calling this api by passing the same content and whenever the service is getting called it is throwing with this particular exception and the same way our generic product exception handler is handling this and we are expecting this result the final thing that we can look at is whenever invalid input is provided then api should fail okay so here we will see two things one how we can use a file to read the json and second whenever any spring boot based validation errors are happening how can we handle them along with the string we can also pass the byte array i have one class byte streams that is coming from the com.google.com.io so you can add the dependency or any way you like but we simply need a byte array it requires the input stream from here we have the resource as stream and we have the file that is available here in our test resources and we are passing the incorrect request so in here we don't have the name name is mandatory field that is what we are verifying so if we just use this path here and then the request and then we have the create incorrect request json and return it will behave the same way as this thing but it is much cleaner so that you need not to write the request and response in the code itself and you can use the same file in your integration test as well from the mvc result we need to get the content and we just need the new object mapper dot read value and here whenever we are getting this response we need this to be of type error response and again the same thing we just need to verify the response so error response is equal to the expected result let's see if it worked that way it is failing okay it says mismatched input exception so whatever response we are trying to match it is not able to match so now we have to see what is happening very first thing that 
we can check is our product request detail and here we have the string name we need this to be a mandatory field not blank and similarly in our controller we need the request body so here we can just add valid uh, here you can see in the test we are getting method argument not valid exception with the validator that we have added with our api now with the incorrect input we will get this method argument not valid exception but we are expecting that it should return the error response that means we also need to handle method argument not valid exception in our controller in our product controller we have handled the exception like this similarly we can handle this here we have this method argument not valid exception of bind exception type this gives us the field error so here we have the get field error and from this we can just use the code and dot get message now if we run our test again it is failing but this time it has some other error it has the validation error messages must not be blank this is coming from the default error not blank annotation correct so we can fix this thing here with the not blank we can pass our own message and the message is going to be message equals to okay, here we have run the test all right so now our test is successful this is how we can test your controller layer by providing the verification for the input for the output for request body etc i hope this video gives value to your time if you enjoyed watching this video please like subscribe and share and also press the notification bell icon to get the latest update on my new videos thanks for watching and happy coding